And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years, a story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. hey. The, universe the universe of you, you hey wav hey. 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 Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you hey wav hey. 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 Working Work for you and your future. future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. Today, we interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you a special presentation. This special presentation will be shown in three parts of which you don't want to miss. And now, judicial murder. Part one. I am the mother of Yahweh Ben Yahweh. I love you, Junior. You were my first, and I love you, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. <laughs> Beth Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wavhe, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, is the spiritual leader of the nation of Yudhe Wavhe, Yahweh. In 1979, he came to Miami, Florida, under a vow of poverty, with little more than the clothes on his back, with a sincere determination to educate people concerning the laws of God, Yudhe Wavhe, Yahweh, and to build a social economic program designed to move the so-called blacks from poverty to riches. But I have seen what he has done. Uh, I'm from Miami, Florida. Prior to uh, the arrival of Brother Yahweh Ben Yahweh in Miami, every year, literally every year in Miami, Florida, there were riots. Uh, black people were taken to the streets. They were frustrated. And they were taking out their frustrations in riots. I've seen buildings burned. I've seen uh, looting. I've seen lives taken, people killed by police and people killed by one another utter chaos. And then along comes Yahweh Ben Yahweh. And these same brothers and sisters who were on the street, frustrated, uh, out of work, 
just frustrated with life itself. This brother came along, and I've seen him uh, working in the streets, urging brothers to come in. Uh, first of all, recognize God, and recognize God can help you. And I've seen the brothers come in and clean themselves up and make uh, boys, men out of boys. And I've seen him make uh, uh, women out of street women. So I can see a positive uh, work that Brother Yahweh Ben Yahweh has done in Miami, Florida. I have seen him take a, a person a, with feet of clay, his whole body being clay, and I have seen this man work m a miracle. He makes that person into a real person with pride who stands up and looks you in the eye and can recite from Shakespeare, from the Bible, from scientific publications. This man is an educator. I have found by following the principles of Yahweh, it caused me to be a wise woman instead of a fool. And I am forever grateful because he has taught me the laws of Yahweh. And so, in addition to being moral and in addition to being principled, the Yahwehs have shown blacks in South Florida that through working together, that through working together and coming together in a common bond, that we can, as a race, move forward. For 10 long years, Yahweh Ben Yahweh's followers drawn together by their common belief in Yahweh, the God of the Bible, joined hands with Yahweh ben Yahweh and built a wholesome community based upon biblical principles of moral behavior, family values, education, self-esteem, and brotherly love. He came to Miami, Florida, a city known for its community unrest and social division, and in spite of it all, Yahweh ben Yahweh and his followers emerge united together, pool their resources, and develop an economic empire worth millions. Nationwide, through the spiritual leadership of Yahweh Ben Yahweh, the nation of Yahweh prospered. The businesses included a manufacturing plant, convention center, hotels and motels, bus lines, supermarkets, a publishing company, apartment buildings, and a national school system to rescue the children. Yahweh University. Yes, ma'am. Please recite number of place values. Number of place values. One, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, billion, billion, trillion, quadrillion, In 1990, the federal government indicted the nation of Yahweh, a bona fide religion, and its spiritual leader, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, under the RICO Act. There were two charges, technically. Uh, well, actually three. There was a racketeering charge of what we call a substantive charge of racketeering, and then conspiracy to racketeer, and then there was a... Um, a third charge, which was only charged against Yahweh ben Yahweh and I believe Judith, um, essentially extortion. So this, although there were murders involved, this was not really a murder case. What the federal prosecutors had done is had uh, put together a bunch of, of, of murder cases and called it a racketeering case. Now racketeering is a very complicated thing, um, quite frankly. Most judges don't understand it. Few lawyers understand it. The arrest of Yahweh ben Yahweh and some of the members of the nation of Yahweh was the result of a federal indictment handed down by the United States Southern District Grand Jury alleging 19 acts of conspiracy to commit RICO, 
including 15 acts of murder, two attempted murders, one arson, and one extortion. If you can't prove a specific crime against somebody, the best thing to do is to charge them with 50 crimes, get a bunch of people to get up there and say bad things about them, and put the jury in a position of either letting this person who, who you said is a bad person go free or charging them a little bit. Um, it's sad, but true. Uh, the, the general technique of any conspiracy or RICO case uh, is to create innuendo and a suggestion of, 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 of an agreement. A lot of people don't understand what RICO is. And that's why when we had to talk to the jury and explain to them what is RICO, I believe they had a hard time understanding it. Well, heck, I have a hard time understanding it. And I took the position during the trial that it's, it's wrong to indict the nation of Yahweh in a racketeering enterprise. And, and let me once again preface this. I, I don't want people to have the impression that uh, I'm an apologist for the religion or that I'm in favor of it or against it. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not a th theologian. I have my own personal religious beliefs. I have my own personal background. I just think it's a problem if you indict a bona fide religion. Racketeering Act, uh, uh, which RICO stands for, Racketeering and, uh, and Organized Crime, uh, was uh, a law passed in the early 1980s uh, targeted at uh, traditional organized crime, uh, the uh, so-called mafia or Cosa Nostra because of the First Amendment issues that, that, that surround and protect religion and religious preachings, um, the idea, even the, the idea of, of, of indicting a, a, a religion as the criminal enterprise uh, was, was quite frankly shocking. And they actually indicted and charged that the nation of Yahweh itself was the racketeering entity or enterprise. Um, uh, quite frankly, th these were the issues. The fact that a religion was targeted as a racketeering enterprise uh, were th what I felt were the really potent issues. And, and I, quite frankly, it was one of the main things that drew me into the case because I thought that this was, first of all, I was somewhat shocked by it. I thought it was an abuse of the Racketeering Act uh, by the U.S. Attorney's Office down here and felt that it was necessary uh, to, to get in and do what I could. Uh, this is the first time, to my memory, that a religious organization was indicted uh, by way of the RICO uh, statutes. In your opinion, does this set a dangerous precedence, for example, the, the entire Catholic Church or the, the Nation of Islam or even uh, other nations, uh, other sovereign nations? Uh, I, I, I could give you the glib remark, and that is, obviously, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> uh, but uh, not taking it rhetorically, I think it does, in fact, uh, represent a dangerous precedent. And who knows uh, who's going to be the, the next victim of this particular uh, use of the statute. Uh, it's very, it's extremely broad, and all the prosecution really has to do is to fashion some set of facts alleged certain particular acts such that it would fall within the four corners of the legislation and you can conceivably uh, be charged as a result of that. Yahweh Ben Yahweh and the nation of Yahweh were targeted for destruction by the federal government. The United States government has a history of incarcerating innocent black leaders. It is almost a badge of honor for a black man to go to jail in this country. There's an actual pattern of human rights leaders, civil rights leaders, and community leaders being falsely accused and wrongfully imprisoned by the federal government. Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King Jr., and Reverend Ben Chavis are all innocent men who have gone to jail. South Africa and India have also jailed innocent leaders, which is why Nelson Mandela and Mahatma Gandhi went to jail. History has shown that because a man is accused does not mean he is guilty. Because a man is convicted does not mean he is guilty. Jesus is a case in point. Jesus was accused of being a malefactor, which is a liar, a murderer, a robber, and a thief. 
Historically, whenever a person of color becomes too powerful in this country, the government finds a way to take him down. Recently uncovered documents from former FBI officers show that the Bureau has been engaged in an overt program to expose, disrupt, and discredit it or otherwise neutralize black leaders and organizations in this country. 25 years ago, the only blacks allowed on Miami Beach were servants and gardeners who had special passes. Now Yahweh Ben Yahweh owns part of that beach, and that in Miami means money and power. Yahweh Ben Yahweh had done certain things that made him a target. Um, that he was a black man and he was getting political power. His race combined with his growing economic and political base uh, made him a prime target. Um, that alone put him under scrutiny. It is clear that Yahweh Ben Yahweh was set up by the American government. The only conspiracy going on was the conspiracy of the government to destroy Yahweh Ben Yahweh and the nation of Yahweh. Yahweh Ben Yahweh had no motive to commit the murders he's accused of. Why would a man whose followers wielded the power of millions of dollars care about killing people, especially when they were no possible threat to him, many of which, which were vagrants living on the street? Interestingly enough, Jim Baker of the PTL Club fame, who according to government officials had defrauded hundreds of people, and who was convicted of stealing millions of dollars for his personal use, was not charged by the government with racketeering. This lack of even-handedness in prosecuting blacks and whites is evidence of systemic racism rampant in our federal courts. Well, Herb Cousins, the FBI case agent, had had Yahweh Ben Yahweh's uh, temples under scrutiny for, uh, I believe, since about 1982 or 1983, according to his testimony at trial, that it was Herb Cousins' job for the last uh, 10 years to get Yahweh Ben Yahweh. But it was very clear from the beginning that the aim of the prosecution, or one of its aims, was to put Yahweh Ben Yahweh in jail, to put these other folks in jail kind of incidentally, and uh, just to make things look fair. And equally as important was to stop the financial life of the organization. Because by cripp crippling it financially, you can then cripple anyone. And that, I think, was the, the reality of the situation, to put the nation of, of, uh, of the Hebrew Israelites out of business. On November 7, 1990, the federal government orchestrated a surprise raid on the nation of Yahweh. The raid encompassed five states, during which time everyone from senior citizens to preschool children found themselves at gunpoint. Both males and females were handcuffed, strip searched, and forced to lay in the streets. There was no resistance. No weapons were found. No drugs were found. In fact, there was nothing illegal found at all. Yahweh Ben Yahweh and 16 of his followers were arrested and held without bond pending trial. And quite frankly, if you believe the presumption of innocence, and that is that a person is, is innocent until proven guilty, then the, what occurs now is you have people who are being jailed, who are presumed innocent, and yet are being held in, in prison awaiting trial. You still have the right to bail provided that you're not within a certain class of people. Um, But in reality, uh, uh, in federal cases, there is no right to bail anymore. It's gone. Attorney General Janet Reno has always said, says a prosecutor's first obligation is to make sure that innocent people are not charged. This, this prosecution tore up the lives of innocent people. On January 6, 1992, the case of the United States of America versus Yahweh Ben Yahweh went to trial in the United States District Court for the Southern District of Florida. This contains a listing of the key evidence that clearly shows Yahweh Ben Yahweh is innocent. 
like the fact that no physical evidence was ever found that directly links Yahweh Ben Yahweh to the commission of any crime. In both the federal and the state cases, Robert Rogier, a pathological liar, confessed serial killer, nicknamed Lying Bob, and paid informant, escaped death in the electric chair by agreeing to testify against Yahweh Ben Yahweh. The case of the United States of America versus Yahweh Ben Yahweh was built around the testimony of one man, and that one man was Robert Lying Bob Rogier. Robert Rogier is a known drug user. In fact, we have sworn testimony that proves he repeatedly smoked crack cocaine. Robert Rogier is an admitted liar. Robert Rogier is the confessed murderer of seven people. Ralph Deloach, former teammate of Robert Rogier's, former roommate of Robert Rogier's, testified at trial, and I quote, Bobby could tell bold-faced, straight-out lies that earned him the nickname Lying Bob in college. Robert Rogier abandoned his wife and young children. No one, not even Rogier's parents, would testify on behalf of his character during the trials. As a reward for testifying against Yahweh Ben Yahweh, Robert Lying Bob Rogier was paid by the government and was awarded a mere 22-year sentence after pleading guilty to killing four people, thus avoiding the electric chair. And after serving only seven of those 22 years, Robert Lyme Bob Rogier is up for parole any day now, and he'll enter the federal government's witness protection program. Please note that this man, Robert Lying Bob Rogier is the key witness of the government against Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Robert Rogier, who admitted under oath, and I believed every word of this, that he stabbed someone who came up to him and touched him as he was urinating in the bushes one day 22 times with a knife for touching him on the back while he was urinating, for tapping him on the shoulder while he was taking a leak in the bushes. Stabbed the man 22 times, who testified under oath that he followed two homosexuals into their apartment in Coconut Grove and actually pinned one of them to the wall with his knife as he was murdering both of them. Who testified time after time after killing people with his own hands and without any degree of remorse. Um, yeah, he'll be out next year, and in the mean, and then he's going to get a free ride, uh, and all because he was able to put Yahweh Ben Yahweh in prison. What are the consequences for Robert Rozier? A year for murder. A year for murder. Federal Witness Protection Program. He's going to be relocated, re-identified, and living as somebody's next door neighbor. Robert Rozier. Because he's under the Witness Protection Program, he will be supported by the federal government uh, until he's relocated in somewhere back into civilian society um, under a fictitious name. He'll probably get some sort of federal job, you know, postman, maintenance, you know, the janitor at the post office. Uh, um, I mean, there's, there's some towns they can't send him to. There's other places they can. Um, but he's, yeah, he's on the public dole for the, probably the rest of his life. He'll be paying for Bob's meals and uh, for his car and for his cocktails. Under somebody else's name, of course. But clearly, a lot of individuals that were prosecuted and pretrial detained were done so on the evidence brought forth by Robert Rozier. Mr. Rozier was obviously uh, the common thread that sort of wove the fabric of the prosecution's case. Uh, it all comes from the testimony of one person, a man named Robert Rozier, a former Yahweh, who is a confessed murderer of four people. And in exchange for a 22-year sentence for four murders, he promised the FBI that he could bring in Yahweh Ben Yahweh. 
Robert Rozier is your worst nightmare. He is a violent, cold, calculating, cocky man. So he made his lies fit their version. He read every document, he reviewed every report, he reviewed every sworn statement of every piece of evidence against him. He knew what the police knew. The state wants you to think that was corroboration. It wasn't corroboration. He knew about it before he ever started talking. So he made his lies fit their version. He saw crime scene photos. While he's sitting in jail, Robert Rozier was desperate, destitute, and facing death. And he does what comes naturally. He lied. And, and Robert Rozier made, made statements that were truly outrageous. Robert Rozier, why is it that you could believe that he'll kill you, but you won't believe he'll lie to you? Robert Rozier had, I believe, good reason to lie because of, of the sentence he was given and the opportunity he was given to get out earlier. Yeah, he was 22 years for four murders and he admitted to three other murders. It was, it was argued to the jury and what the government stated is that on the prior occasions that Robert Rozier had made statements, he had lied then, but that when he was testifying, he was telling the truth. Robert Lying Bob Rozier was discredited as a witness because he was caught in lie after lie after lie. In legal terms, this means he was impeached. We hope you have enjoyed part one of Judicial Murder, and we look forward to you joining us next week for part two. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the East with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikar Deshemeyaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiase Razonka, Ki Vashemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Kain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kati Enu, Ki Moshe Sol Kain, Gamanak Nu, La Koteom La Nu, Veal Tefi Enu, Lede Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamam Laha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and his Son Yahweh Ben Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleikum. To order the transcript or DVD to the Judicial Murder series, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337 and ask about our special discount. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.